welcome back to Butterfly Ministries, and I am Pastor Debbie. Yay! I'm so excited about today. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very special guest today, and um, I've been wanting to get you on my show for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> show it's just been a little a little bit hectic but in a yeah good way. yeah in a good way you know how god just kind of shines his light on certain people and he's like you need to get this one you need to get that one you are one of them oh, you know the you just had this beautiful little light around you so oh, you. i want to introduce you today i'm pastor uh, liz I'm, a, I'm actually also a broadcaster i have my show here from broken to breakthrough where we really focus on testimony so i'm just so excited to be here with everybody and I'm excited to have her today. Okay, so the name of my show is called, Is Your Seed Being Choked? Mm. And trust me, I had no clue what I was going to be doing today until five o'clock this morning. Don't you just <laughs> love how God just is always on time, yeah. right? <laughs> it's not our time. You know, his word says, my ways are not your ways. That's My right. thoughts are not your thoughts. They're far above and beyond you could even think or imagine. And um, God is an awesome, awesome God. He sure is. And he is so full of surprises. Mm -hmm. Every single day I wake up, I'm like a little kid <laughs> that is on Christmas morning, mm. and I want to see what's under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I want to see what God has for me and what he has for his people out there. So um, the scripture that God gave me, we all know about it, okay? It's very familiar. But what does that have to do with um, the title, right? Okay, so what I wanted to address was suicide, anxiety, and depression. And how the Lord came about giving me this today was so amazing mm. because when you think about this scripture, Luke 8, 5 talks about the sower of the seed. And even you said the same thing. Wait a minute. What have you been taught about the seed, Liz? Uh, well, every time I hear about the seed, it's either for harvest of souls or, mm -hmm. um, you know, finances. <laughs> so when I heard the, the verse, I'm like, how are we going to connect it? But... I promise you guys, it's going to be amazing the way God just connects all the dots. <laughs> I'm amazed when my pastor does a, his uh, teaching. I'm like, what is popsicles? <laughs> what is about? What is this about fudgicles and going to Costco and, and you know filling up your cart? What does it have to do with our message? And yet it all comes together. Yeah. So um, I wanted to read this scripture, but I also want to give Liz. Um, an opportunity because we have two parts to our show. I almost wish we had more time because I'm so excited what the Holy Spirit has imparted to Amen. us. Um, I wanted to give her time to share about how God brought her into the kingdom mm -hmm. and the seeds that were planted in your heart that were not good yeah. and how God was able to remove that. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. So uh, um, Luke 8, 5, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was mm. sown. Now, um, this is, okay, so this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. Mm. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they just fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their merry way, they're choked by their worries and their cares, the riches and the pleasures of this world. 
But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by uh, persevering, Mm. produce a crop. Wow. This is so powerful. Wow. When the Lord showed me that, um, I do a lot of counseling with women, and God gave me a, a vision. And it was the cutest little thing ever. I saw this girl coming out of her house, the one that I was counseling, and I saw her come out into the garden. Mm. And she was like, oh my gosh, you know, something has happened and, and, and the, you know, the leaves have been eaten up and, and the flowers are just withering. And I saw this in the, in the spirit, that the things that we allow yeah. into our heart can destroy our garden. And our garden mm. is our heart. Yeah. And the seeds that destroy us, one of the seeds that I wanted us to address is that, that, that I don't want to call it a spirit of suicide right now, but I want to use that, um, that word suicide as a very, very, very dangerous insect. Yeah. And um, in the days that we're living in right now, I don't know if you have dealt with this, but it seems to be the go-to. Yeah. You know, um, the boyfriend left or the husband left or, or um, you know, this isn't working for my life. And they just want, they have, that seed was planted a yeah. long time ago. And, and the word of God says, think on these things. Yeah. Whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, and whatever is a good po- report. So I think about our garden and how we have an opportunity to take care of that garden. And we have to be so, so, so um, persistent Mm. in doing that. And um, before those insects come in, or, you know, I did a show on, help, I've been hijacked. (laughs) And um, there's so many things that you could use as an analogy that steals and and comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And God gave me today the garden. Mm. And, um, you know, our hearts and how we become um, hopeless. Yeah. And how we allow those words to come in and how we partner with those words. But I want you to think about your heart. Think about the garden. And think about what are the things that you've allowed to be planted, literally planted Mm -hmm. in your heart that have been so, so poisonous. Yeah. And so with that being said, I want to give Liz, this beautiful lady. Oh, thank you. (laughs) To to share, um, just kind of share how you came into the things of God and what were some of the things that you had to take out absolutely I actually want to go back to something that the Lord's just really highlighting in this moment when you said the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy okay so he comes to steal the promise on your life yes okay he comes to uh, ultimately destroy anything that God is planting because he the end result is he wants to kill us and that's just the truth Um, now I want to share with you guys Ephesians 2, 2. It says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Mm -hmm. the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So you see, when she was saying um, about people hearing like like suicide, uh, the enemy, his oldest tactic is he will literally make it sound like you and say, kill yourself. Why don't you just die? Yes. Why don't you just kill yourself? And this is something that as believers, or not even believers, but anybody in the world needs to know the difference between God's voice, the devil's voice, and our soul or yes. the burrito that we had the night before. Yes. And I want to touch on this because it's so important. I, I feel like this message is so timely. Yes, um, it is. It's really, really timely because of what we are going through. And I have a daughter that is 13 years old. And I feel like I want to go with her a little bit more on this because she just recently said, Mom, 
I'm hearing the enemy for the first time tell me, kill yourself. Oh my gosh, that just gave me goosebumps. And I said, okay, honey, so let's go ahead and prepare for war. Wow. We're going to prepare for war. Yes. I'm going to teach you to discern when it's his voice, since you already have your discernment. <clears throat> she's, you know, she knows the word, she prays. Yes. Um, she can discern that it's the enemy, but I need, I, I need to really get her ready for the war at hand. Because a lot of times you guys will think, and I honestly, I feel like it's everybody that goes through it. I've spoken to many leaders, many pastors that also say, Pastor Liz, I hear the, the enemy saying, yes, kill yourself. Yeah. Why don't you just die? Yes. Um, and we need to know that it's not of God. Mm -hmm. That it's not your soul. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy that comes yes. to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. And with that being said, I actually have a little um, a little scar from the days where I didn't know it was the enemy. And Ooh, and to wow. make my, my testimony somewhat short, I come from a background of 18 years of alcoholism, uh, several attempts of suicide. Um, because I did not know that. Yeah, several attempts of suicide. And God chose you to... <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Several suicide attempts oh, because I did it. Is he awesome or what? We serve an amazing God. Now I feel so much closer to you. <laughs> we serve an amazing God. Um, and <clears throat> when the Lord rescued me, I was wow. so involved with the new age because I, I'm very prophetic by nature. So I was craving for more and I went into the new age and it's like the more enlightened I was the more, the darker I became. And then the Lord J Jesus Christ came to me in a dream and he also spoke to me audibly for the first time in my life. And that's when I surrendered my life and he delivered me from alcoholism. He delivered me from the spirit of suicide. We have to call it what it is. Yeah, it's a spirit it's a of suicide. Spirit. Um, and, and spirits are demons. I mean, yes. I, I know it sounds crazy, trust me. Had you told me this five years ago, I would have thought you were smoking something, but... <laughs> Listen, when the Lord delivered right. me from alcoholism, I saw the demon of alcoholism in my dreams, mm -hmm. screaming out blood because he was losing grip of Whoa, me. Oh, I love that. So we That's know powerful. it's a spirit. We know it's demons that are trying to get you to just, you know, uh, what is it? Check out before Check out your time before so that you time. don't become everything you're called to, to, to be. But I am here to tell you that what the Lord has done for me in just four years. I mean, again, four years ago, I was in the shelter. I was living at the Salvation Army with my little girl. And what the Lord has done from then until now is wow. nothing short of a miracle because I decided to surrender and gain knowledge. And knowledge is power. I love when she said that because um, I, I, I lost one. I lost a friend just yeah. recently. And um, I've talked to her many, 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 many times. I never really had a one-on-one -on -one like yeah. you and me session. I wish I had because I do a lot of that. And I, I, I felt so um, just, just hopeless, I guess it was. Uh, the feeling was uh, I should have said this or I should have said that or, I, well, I, you know, I could have done this or I could have done that. Why and how can I have stopped this? And... Um, the Lord showed me something uh, that was just so powerful. And also, um, the Lord spoke to me the other day about this too, is we need, like you just said, knowledge is powerful. We need to be educated. Mm, we uh -huh. need to be educated. And that's where the yeah. seed, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. That's where the seed comes in. And we need to, we need to guard our heart mm -hmm. against that the the wiles of the enemy it says he comes to kill steal and destroy but you know i was thinking about this we we quote these scriptures yeah. over and over and over but we do not look at them and see how powerful they are That's right. and that is the word of god says cast yeah. down cast down you got all the bible verses that the lord gave me <laughs> yes amen the Written high the thoughts and imaginations that it's all uh, itself against the word of god and i'm going to be raw and real with you the last text that i got from this girl was i am not loving mm. i cannot be loved i am not lovable i am full of demons and let me just hang myself. 
and immediately, I mean, I mean immediately, I called her, but then she was gone. Wow. And here's what broke my heart, is this, these seeds that had been planted in her heart were planted when she was a little girl. Yeah. She was suffering from deep-rooted rejection. And um, we've talked about it many, many, many times. And I don't understand. I'm not God, so I don't understand everything. I don't understand, you know, why she had to go the way she did. But the thing is, is it taught me something. Yeah. It taught me that, you know, we need to educate That's right. our women. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the seed. And this is our garden. Mm -hmm. This, you know... Um, the Word of God says, cast down all the high thoughts and imaginations, absolve itself against the Word of God. And the other thing is our weapons, our weapons are not carnal. They, when you, yeah. um, like she was saying about her daughter, immediately we have to get into the Word. And we have to say, what does the Word of God say? And we cannot partner with those words. You cannot entertain, just like, in the garden like i don't like gardening i don't know why god gave me that i don't even like to get my fingers in the dirt but this was so real if you see that your garden or your heart or whatever has got things in it that can destroy it yeah you know the lord told me a long time ago when i was going through some really heavy duty stuff i'll allow you to carry three things my love my glory mm. and my presence and you carry anything else, and I've said this on practically every time I do on my show, you try to carry anything else, it will destroy you. And when you get those insects, in fact, this is so funny. I asked the Lord, I said, what is the main insect, the main insect that comes into the garden that will destroy it, the most poisonous one? <clears throat> Sorry. And the Lord said, it was a red back spider. Hmm. I was, here I am looking up spiders. <laughs> God, it's so funny. It cracks me up. And he said that it is deadly. Yeah. And he said he wants you to know that that red back spider, you can look it up, you can Google it, is absolutely so poisonous that it will take you down <clears throat> in 15 minutes. Mm. The spirit of suicide, you do not, first of all, it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not of God. And it, it is something that we, as Christians, we have authority to tread on the serpents and the scorpions and all the wiles of Amen. the enemy and the spiders, Amen. you know, that come into our garden. And when she was sharing about multiple times of trying to take her life is because she didn't have that knowledge. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we... We talk about this, which is walking in righteousness. Yes. Okay. Walking in right standing. Now, you can have all the head knowledge that this says, mm -hmm. but if there's unforgiveness in your heart. That's right. If there's bitterness, if there's hate. That's right. Then we give the enemy a foothold. Yes. And that's why the Bible says in, uh, in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack, lack of knowledge. Of knowledge yes. You see, there's so many people walking around having anxiety attacks, mm -hmm. having panic attacks left and right. Yes. And I've, I've, I've spoken to many uh, people with the, with the, where they tell me, oh, but a prophet said you're healed and I still have anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. You see, it does. it's not enough for someone to lay hands on you and say you're healed. Remember, every time Jesus would say uh, to somebody, you're healed, he would say, go and sin no more. Yes. He would even say, go and sin no more, or it's, it could be worse. Yes. And we have to, as a church, we have mm -hmm. to be honest about um, our walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to prepare you guys, equip you guys. That's right. That as you learn the word, do the word mm -hmm. so that the enemy doesn't have a foothold, foothold. on you. Yes. Because the enemy can actually have legal access. I'm just going to say that, yes. Legal access yes. over... Um, a situation if you don't remember the Bible says uh, if you forgive then our fa my father in heaven will forgive you mm -hmm. too 
in this season, for those of you that are watching, and I feel that so strongly in the Lord, I literally feel like the anointing of the Lord. Um, it's so important that as a church, we learn to forgive. And by the way, I get it. I actually struggle still with the spirit of rejection because of the way I grew up. I still struggle with it, wow. but I can now discern it. Now I can discern mm -hmm. when it's a spirit of rejection. Now yes. I can discern when it's a, a spirit of accusing spirit. Mm -hmm. And and it's been through the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And now I can tell the difference. And then I can say, Lord, in this moment when I feel rejected, I choose to forgive I love them and I thank you that I am accepted by you. So our declaration is so important uh, because our declaration ends up either partnering with the devil yes, or partnering with God. And that's really where the manifested power happens. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm so glad, you know, that, <clears throat> sorry, I'm so glad that you brought that up because the words that are coming out of our mouth. Yeah. They're seeds. Their seeds. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was talking to um, a girl one day and she, during my counseling session, and um, I'm going to be doing a series mm. on narcissism. Mm. Yeah. This is one of God's enemy yeah. that is so relentless. It comes from, you know, it could be a parent, or it could be a friend, or it could be someone that you're in ministry with, or whatever. But what happens is, uh, and the Lord showed me this too, is not that we think about this, but the Lord showed me that narcissism is also attached to suicide. Mm, ooh, yeah. It is attached to suicide because... It's, it's um, like a selfish... Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it's attached to suicide. And the reason I say that is because um, I had a session just recently and there was a brick wall. Just everything. Just uh, no matter what, <clears throat> I felt this wall. And I'm like, God, what is this? What is this? What is this? And I, I didn't get it right away. Um, and the thing is, is the spirit of narcissism paralyzes you. Yeah. The, ser the spirit of narcissism um, strips you completely of your identity. Mm -hmm. And when you live with someone who's a narcissist, seeds are planted. Yeah. You're no good. You're stupid. You're dumb. You can't do this. You're never going to, you know, these are some of the things that I wasn't going to bring this up now, but... You know, you're worthless. You'll never measure up. You're not enough. You're never going to get this figured out. I'm a mess. Mm. I always do the wrong thing. I'm exactly like my parents. I mean, it goes, uh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I'm unwanted. The girl who just took her life recently, yeah. that was the one thing she said. I yeah. am not lovable. Yeah. These are the seeds that get planted not by us. Yeah. They get planted by other people that we have, um, I call them soul ties. Mm. And I, I, am so, <laughs> I am like so um, on fire when it comes to talking about soul ties <clears throat> because I believe the soul tie is connected to the person, mm. the father, the mother, the sister, the brother, the uncle, whatever. And what deposited into that person? Rejection, abandonment, low self-esteem, self-hatred. And when you have all those seeds planted at the same time, that spirit of hopelessness and yeah. suicide comes in. Mm -hmm. Because you have been, your garden is infested yeah. with these insects and with these worms or whatever you want to call it and and it, it's choking out the word of god mm -hmm. it's choking out the very life that's in you and it's it's hard for you to move forward and to thrive because these things you have to let go of yeah these things you have to kill i mean literally get your raid and kill them kill yeah. those those nasty bugs and <clears throat> I saw this so clearly today, and I never thought about it before. Never, never thought about it before. But, you know, um, there, there's a, 
um, scripture. I can't remember what what it is, but it's not it's not what we eat. It's it's what we put in, you know, into ourselves, into our spirit. It's what we, yeah, yeah, and what comes, comes out. out. It's what comes out that is unclean. Mm -hmm. it, yes, yeah. exactly. So going more into what you know where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to <clears throat> piggyback off of that. If that okay. If that's okay. So, so you know, she's speaking. She's speaking about the words that are being said, like the seeds. This is something that, for me, was revelational. Which is, you cannot defeat a thought with another thought. Mm. <laughs> I love this. So, if you hear the enemy telling you you're stupid, mm -hmm. you can't say I'm not stupid, right? Um, the Lord had me move into a woman's home. Uh, it was almost a year ago, and I lived there for for some months. I was there mentoring, yeah, almost, yeah. Wow. I lived there for some months, and I remember my girls. Um, they used to tell me, you know, I just I'm hearing all this, this in my head. You know, yes. you're stupid. You're, <clears throat> you know, he doesn't use any new mo. No, uh -uh. it's all like things that he uses on all of us, mm -hmm. and he's done it for thousands and thousands of years. Um, but what I told them is what I want to advise you guys that are watching every time that you hear the enemy, write it down, but also look for a Bible verse that would counter exactly that thought yes. because it's only the word of God that will transform. It's only the word of God that is the sword that can actually give you That's a right. shot at overcoming the enemy. Mm -hmm. So I want to challenge you guys. I know we're running out of time, but I want to challenge you guys. When you hear the enemy speak something, look for a verse and, and watch what the Lord will do on your behalf. I agree with that. You know, my daughter and I were, um, we were doing a show together and I had this in front of me and we, we actually had scriptures that we were able to counteract what was saying. And, um, you know, I love, love, love in Joyce Meyer in yeah. her, her book, The Battlefield of the Mind, because this is a, a battlefield, battlefield. Mm -hmm. and the enemy is always seeking whom he can devour Amen. and every day every day we have a choice are we going to choose life or are we going to choose death and yes we are running out of time we do have part two um i love you we love you um god bless you and boy The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.